Welcome to the My Fence Life bonus podcast series, Ask Me About My Day, where you can eavesdrop on phone conversations between Dan, industry leaders, and fencers from around the country to find out about their day. What's happening, Fence Lifers? We uh, we got an awesome show for y'all today. Um, this is season five. Ask me about my day, number 108. This is going to be an awesome show. I got a great guest for you today. Um, you know, we're going to be naming this one, Finding the Right Fit. When to hire a business consultant or when should I hire a business coach? Um, the guy we got on today is pretty awesome, man. Uh, the, he's a... He's the CEO and founder of Next Level Solutions. This guy was a headhunter for multi-billion dollar commercial and construction contractors to find senior project managers, engineers, all these type of people to erect vertical construction like uh, hotels and casinos and condos and all this stuff. So this guy is pretty impressive, man. He's been in the construction industry for 15 plus years. Uh, he's one of the original, one of the OGs of when Job Nemeth started. I think he was like higher number five or number eight. I don't know. He was in the single digits. Let's just put it that way. And uh, while he was there, he created the professional services uh, division where Job Nemeth would come out on site, set up your CRM, and uh, just get your company up and running, man. And he's, uh, he's a pretty impressive guy. Matter of fact... I just thought about this. This is the guy that I met in Utah back in May of 2022, I think it was, or 2021. I forget to what, what year it was. But I met this cat, and I needed his contact info, and he grabbed his card, and he tapped my phone, and he's like, check that out. And I was like, whoa, this is badass. And uh, guess what? Because of that, I've circled around. I've met Charlie China. And he's the owner of One Tap Connect, and now I'm using One Tap Connect. It's crazy how that's that that circle worked, man. But anyway, let's go ahead. We're gonna bring this guy on, Ronnie Smith, Next Level Solutions. How you doing today, Ronnie? I'm doing great, uh, Dan. How are you, bud? I'm doing good, man. It's great to see you, man. Um, dude, I didn't know you were a headhunter. You know, yeah, that, that's something that uh, that's something that I kind of fell into back in uh, the early 2000s. And uh, it was one of those things to where uh, it was booming. Construction was booming um, and, and people were, were needing to hire people, didn't know where to find them. And uh, we went after those people, man, and we would recruit them and hire them and and place them into to really large uh, commercial construction uh, companies. And uh, it was a lot of fun, man. A lot of blast. Yeah, man. When I heard you were a headhunter, I just automatically got a picture of you like wearing a loincloth and a spear with this guy's head on it. I was like, man, <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie's badass. I'm not screwing around with this guy. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> anyway, man. So, look, the reason why I brought you on is because you do business consulting. You do business coaching. And I've had guys in my inbox saying, hey, man. I don't know if I need a business coach. You know, I hear you talk about consulting Ron on your show and this and that. And, and do I need a coach? I, I don't know when. So I, I got to pondering about that. And you and I have been going back and forth on a Google Doc. And we've got some pretty good questions that that as business owners, we need to ask ourselves, hey, what are the answers to these questions? Because if I'm answering them one way, I should probably look and get a consultant or a business coach, right? And uh, what I really, really like about you uniquely as being a business coach is your ties with Job Nimbus and how you can take existing customers and new customers and mm -hmm. literally coach them and help them build out their Job Nimbus. So it's like a win-win when it comes to next level solutions. You know, I, that, that, that's so true. And, and the people that, um, that I have on my team, uh, also, 
um, kind of was uh, job nimbus in the early stages. And uh, and so they have a good understanding of not just not just the systems itself, but they also have a good understanding of business and understanding the, the processes and the streamlining the companies and, and then building the systems out that will meet uh, meet their needs. A lot of times we have found that uh, people that are looking for like a software or system to run their business, they have to kind of like uh, manipulate it to work. So we're able to take the software and put it inside of their business instead of their business having to conform to the software. And so that way uh, we can use terminologies that uh, that they know and that they understand and, and the flexibility and the way that Job Nemesis is able to uh, to be able to be customized and built out is pretty awesome. Well, yeah, and plus you've been in construction 15 plus years. You're now uh, head first in the roofing business. Um, I think uh, you were hired on to literally just plant your feet into a, a company down in, is it Dallas or Houston? Where are you? Uh, we're down in the uh, Houston area. So, so yeah, so um, they're, uh, elder, they're looking to grow, man. They're wanting to expand. And uh, so uh, come and plant my feet there and be able to help them to make sure that the foundation of the company can, can really survive in that type of growth uh, as you're developing and adding on, you know, adding on another locations and stuff like that to have a steady growth. Well, look, man, let's dive into it. These are ask me yeah. about your days. I try to keep them a little short, but uh, if we don't cover everything, maybe I'll have you back next week and we can do uh, continue on. But hopefully we'll get through it all. Um, all right. So, hey, guys, first question. Are we struggling to acquire new customers or generate leads? I think that would be a really good question to ask yourself and to see if you need a, a business coach. W- would you agree? I, I do. I do agree. And, you know, I think in it almost it doesn't matter what industry it is. And it really it, it really is determined based on where people are at in, in their business. Right. Um, when you're a smaller company and you're getting ready to develop a company, that's one of the biggest struggles that people face is like, where do I get leads? Where do I where do I find them? How do I get the revenue to uh, get kick started to where you can start growing? And um, it's extremely important to um, understand uh, your circle of influence. Uh, when people ask, well, how do where do I even start? You start with the circle of influence to to begin to uh, reach out and develop um, strategically looking at uh, avenues for leads and stuff like that. But I'll just tell you, uh, Dan, it's been my experience that when you get started, um, if the more that people can focus on the referral base and, and, and shooting content, shooting videos and, and putting being able to post up on their social media platforms and stuff like that, um, it just begins to start trickling in over a period of time. But it, it, it does take time to get that that moving. Well, I find that a business coach, man, and, or a consultant, whatever you want to call it, they, they kind of have an expertise in marketing and sales strategies. You know, they can help yeah. you. They can help you identify target markets, improve lead generation uh, techniques. I know, I know. I've got consultant Ron working for me, man, and and he's brought some things to the surface that uh, that have helped me implement you know effective marketing campaigns to to drive my business growth. It is extremely important. You know, when you have a when you have a coach or you have a consultant coming in, um, you're getting an outside perspective. And so, you know, when you're a business owner, you're so focused on just trying to figure it out. But having someone that can come in and and be able to see it in a clear way and people say all the time, well, when should I have a coach? Um, It's kind of like this. It's like if you're going to play golf. Uh, if you want to be a golfer, you go get golf lessons, right? right. Because you, you want to you want to learn the right techniques. You want to know the swing and how fast do you swing, and then you know what is the distance and stuff like that. So inside of your business, you know, hiring a coach is one of those things to where you know the earlier that you can get in and establish the foundation of your company. Um, is is extremely important, and um, and and having that coach can they can see things to where you may or may not know or didn't have that experience, um, but pulling someone with knowledge and understanding and really cares about your business is it's so important, Dan. That when you're hiring a coach, 
is that you're hiring someone that is is catching your vision, understanding where you're wanting to go, and then build that process out that will allow you to get there. That's a great point, man. So what's another question you think we should ask ourselves, uh, Ronnie? Uh, you know, I think maybe a better question, Dan, is, uh, you know, do we lack clear uh, business strategy and long-term vision? Um, I think that is so important in business to understand, you know, first of all, where are we going and then how do we back ourselves into that? Um, and then how do we get to to that place? And uh, it, it's kind of like this in business is like I'm here. Uh, I'm, I'm actually here, man, in California right now. And uh, I've only been here for a few times. Well, guess what's my best friend? My GPS is my best friend. And 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 basically looking at a business strategy um, is like your GPS to your business. It has a destination. Um, so it'll it'll take me the fastest route on how to get there. And a lot of times in businesses, um, they don't have they don't have those directions and we can end up getting in the, the wrong places and going down the wrong roads and stuff like that. Well, it. it the, Having a business consultant coach, you know, they like they work with my team to set specific specific goals, you know, yeah. um, outline, you know, plans of action, um, you know, and they ensure that 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 you stay on track and that you achieve the objectives. You know, um, I'm constantly getting emails in the middle of the night or whatever where. You know, uh, Ron's going through my spreadsheets going, hey, man, I'm a little concerned about this. What's going on here? Why Why am I not seeing this? Hey, we need more. We got to get a little more granular on these spreadsheets. Uh, you know, um, let's go ahead and start breaking things down by zip code, not just by city, because some cities have two zip codes. And, I'm, I mean, you know, I never thought about that. You know, yeah. and, uh, you know, we landed a, uh, you know, like a $60,000 commercial job. He's like, hey. We need to pull that out of the numbers. You know, that's not something you want to bank on all the time. So let's let's pull that out of the numbers. Or if you want, we can just take what your average job is and take it from 60000 and make it the cost of an average job and just go that route. So we, we start looking at our numbers that way. But then we also break out those commercial jobs. And we're like, hey, this is what we're doing commercial. So, man, I've got an extensive spreadsheet that – helps me track all those those objectives and, and and we've got goals you know and 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 it's a it's a big deal man it really is it, it keeps me on it keeps me on track yeah you know and you bring up a good point dan when you're talking about that and uh when 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 my consultants come out you know you're looking at different quadrants of the business right you're you're looking at a marketing sector you're looking at a sales uh, piece of that. You're looking at the operation side of this and you're looking at accounting and they all blend together. They all go hand in hand together. And if any of those sectors are broken, um, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But but, you know, it's important to understand the the culture uh, of the business. You know, when you're when you're a smaller company and you're pretty much you're just your it's you and your truck um you know and then but then as you grow and you start bringing people on um one of the the biggest challenges that most people face is communication breakdown internally it happens all the time and then not knowing where their break even points are or not knowing how to look at the metrics or yeah. or how is the health of the cash flow um, you know, um, are we in a good place cash flow wise to be able to hire that next person or buy that truck? Um, so anyway, so, so that's, it's very, that's a big deal because, you know, um, cause all Ron will be like, Hey, this is what our overhead is. This is what, our, this is what our, uh, our, uh, gross profit margin is. This is where we're, you have to sell this much just to cover overhead. Yeah. And it doesn't look good this month. What, what, what's going on? And he'll get on my ass. Then I get on everybody else's ass. And, you know, he popped in the office the other day. I was like, oh, shit. I didn't know you were coming. He's like, you're not supposed to know I'm coming. <laughs> that's, that's right. Well, you know, and that's that's so important because a lot of people don't know their numbers. And, and you know, for years um, traveling, um, you know, I mean, traveling across the country uh, we did uh, with Job Nimbus, I did a kick and asphalt tour. And uh, I believe we did somewhere around 14, 15 states and about 35 cities that we traveled the country uh, in our fifth wheel in 21. 
And and going out and, and working with that, that was one of the biggest things that we recognized is that most companies don't really didn't know their numbers. And so that's why I started getting in and digging into it. Matter of fact, I think when you were in Utah, um, that was one of the things that I actually spoke about and to understand the, the, all the different numbers that you should be tracking in your business um so so it's a big deal and and the more that you understand your gross profit margins your net margins your break-even cost um you know your sales to lead conversion rates uh when you understand what those are you can use those metrics to help people to train people and where they're lacking it so it's a big deal yeah i think when we were in utah um uh, Miss Defense of Florida signed up with some time with y'all and uh, hired y'all to do yeah. some things. I think uh, SWI Fence of uh, Wyoming hooked yep. up hooked yep. up with y'all and did and did some stuff to get the job Nimbus up and running because of Veronica was there from SWI and uh, Taylor was there from Miss Defense of Florida. So they, they sure know, did. They actually did. Another another question I think we need to ask ourselves. You know, are we struggling with our project management and and timely completion of our projects. You know, I, I find mm-hmm. I find that uh, a, a consultant can can help a company improve their project management process by ensuring projects are completed efficiently and within deadlines. So I'll give you a prime example. Okay, we're looking at the numbers. Something's just not right. We're trying to figure it out. And uh, you know, consultant Ryan says. So how's the production of the crews? Because we keep track of that. It's like, well, you know, I, I got this one crew. I noticed we had a little issue here. And then Dylan's like, well, you know, we had an issue on that same job. Well, what crew was that? Oh, that was that crew. And we had an issue here, and we had to go back, and the customers could pull, well, which crew? Oh, that was that crew. You know what? We cut them loose. Yeah, yeah. Because come to find out, after it only took a couple weeks, it took mm-hmm. us like three weeks, you know, the fourth week, I got rid of one of the guys on the crew, moved the other guy to a, just to be a floater. He went from a crew leader to be a floating helper to the next week going, hey, man, I, I, you know, you got to go. And that was because I had a consultant that sat there and said, well, hey, are you ask yourself these questions. Where are we missing the mark? Where are we bleeding at? Right. I, I was bleeding there. You know, that's a big deal Um, when you're when you're looking when you're looking inside of of the business. Right. Because without sales, there is no production without production. There is no cash flow. And um, it's extremely important to understand those cycle times and how long does it take, Um, you know, looking at efficiency, making sure you have the right people sitting in the right seat that's running those. Um, even, you know, even in the fencing world or roofing world, you're still ordering materials. Those materials are still being picked up and, um, you know, getting to the job site, not having not having everything that you needed because you were uh, whether you're six posts short or mm-hmm. whether there wasn't whether there wasn't enough cedar pits, you know, uh, far as the cedar pickets or if there wasn't if you're doing, um, you know, a chain link fence and, and not having the materials. And it, that's a big deal because what people don't realize that if you don't have the right things when you get there and being able to develop systems to where when you do get there that you're checking the material before you start, it is so much easier to uh, to be able to define that in the beginning instead of waiting until the end of the day. And now you just lose a half a day of production because you didn't have enough. And now you got to send a crew back out there to right. go finish now it's a little bit different, I guess, because in the fencing workers, you got to let you know you got to let things set and settle before you can do certain things. But but there's uh, definitely ways to to increase the efficiencies in the production side of things. Yeah, and that's that's what a consultant has done for us, man. He's you know he's provided management techniques. He's helped us optimize our workflow to enhance our productivity. Um, yeah. He's given us project management tools giving us all this stuff and look i've been doing this this is my 24th year now i didn't take this business serious until 2019 up until then i was me i had a truck and a and a sub crew and i was just happy with that you know and this is this everything you see here is all pepper's fault she uh pepper was like uh you know you really got something here you need to do something with it so i was like all right so i went after 
19 or 20 years. I went from a sole proprietor to an LLC. And then I was a business. So now yeah. when I tell people, I've been in business 24 years, like, yeah, well, we only see that you've really been a business for four. I'm like, ah, shit. Yeah. That yeah. hurt me. That hurt me. I should have LLC'd a long time ago, but I didn't because I had some really bad business advice in the beginning. You know, and, and I know that's not on our questions, but I'm going to tell you what, that's extremely important, you know, because a lot of times people don't really understand, well, should I be an LLC with limited liability? Or should I be an S corporation? Should I be a C corporation? Can I do a DBA? And understanding all the, the tax benefits of being in the right one, because establishing that is huge. Because, you know, if you don't set it up right in the beginning, that as you grow, um, you know, having business credit to be able to establish things, is, it's, uh, it's different. And, you know, protect yourself personally from the business, you know, that's a big deal. Yeah, it is. It is, man. Um, you know, another question I think we need to ask ourselves is, is our profit margin lower than we'd like it to be? You know, uh, a, a business consultant can analyze the company's financials, the uh, yeah. the the cost of things, the the pricing strategies. You know, trying to help them identify opportunities where they can improve their profit margin. You know, um, I, I, you know, I keep saying consult Ron because I met Ron before I met you know knew Ronnie was doing what he's doing today, but. You know, consult Ryan, he was suggesting, you know, cost saving stuff. Hey, man, we can save money here. You know, we need to make a price adjustment here. You know, um, he helped me with my financial planning, you know. Um, yeah. You know, I remember one of the things, one of the biggest things he taught me, and I never actually thought about it. He said a change order. A change order should be a whole lot more profit margin than your regular yeah. job. You already got the job. It's a change order. You should make more money on it. You should. And, you know, and, and that's the thing. Um, a lot of times people don't really know what their cost is. They're so used to taking a price and they think, you know, they're not if they don't watch the um, the price of materials, man, materials are fluctuating. And over, especially over these last few years um, to where, you know, at one point, you know, you were able to buy material 10 to 15, 20 percent less. Well, and then you're using that pricing that you were using then and then not keeping up with material costs or, or, or the labor costs. And then all of a sudden, everybody else is getting paid but you. And, um, <laughs> and, and so, you know, suppliers are getting paid, kind of the, the subs are getting paid, but then there's not even enough money there for, for you. And, and um, you know, a lot of times, you know, people say, like, oh, man, I did $10 million this year. Well, how much did you keep of that? Yeah. You know, uh, so 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 profit, knowing your profit margins are, are really good. And then in the industries that you're in to what it is, because you want to stay, you know, you want to you know, you want to stay competitive um, for sure. But but the, a lot of times, man, people are just throwing away money that they don't have to throw away or, you know, they have materials that either a they use on the next job or they, you know, they keep it or they you know, a lot of times they don't take care of it or they don't send it back and get credits for it. And um, they, they lose a part of their, you know, their, their, their margins just by not returning the materials they didn't use if they didn't have another job for that to go to. You know, well, you know, something that happened to us was is I was paying attention to my cost of materials, but I didn't update my price in the job Nimbus. And this went on for about three weeks. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> talk, oh, yeah. Talk about come back and bite you in the ass. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We should have been selling these jobs for more money. You know, made the adjustment, yeah. overcame it. But guess who brought that to my attention? Ron. He's like, Ron. something's not right. And I'm like, man, I mean, I'm doing yeah. everything we're supposed to be doing. And then he's like, well, you know, you charge. Uh, what about your material costs? This and that. We pulled up a spreadsheet and I'm like, oh, shit, I haven't updated this. In a, and you can see the date. He's like, well, that's where you're losing money. Let's update it. So I updated it. And sure enough, we were off, man. Our cost was up. Yeah. And I didn't have it figured in. You know, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. And and that's one thing I like best about having a consultant. Because as a business owner, I feel like, ah, oh, I can do whatever I want, you know. <laughs> he holds yeah. me accountable. 
You know, he's yeah. like my boss. And a lot of us entrepreneurs go into business thinking, oh, I'm a business owner. I don't have a boss. No, I, I wholeheartedly believe you should have one. And I learned that. I was watching a YouTube video one day, and this guy says, uh, you know, I, I was like, man, I got to get my stuff together. I got a meeting, you know, in three days with, with my with my consultant, and I got to get this. It was all, it, it has some accountability to it. And a lot of business owners don't have any accountability because they don't have anybody looking over their shoulder, making them do what they're supposed to do. You know, and, and that's, there's some, there, that's very, very true. And, and the thing about it is, you know, for, for entrepreneurs, it's been an experience of mine that we have a lot of good people. They understand, they understand certain aspects of the business, but they've never ran a business before. And, and so, and really and truly, if you think about who our bosses are, is our customers. Uh, I mean, because without customers, we don't have any revenue. And without revenue, we don't have a business, right? And so, so it's important that we do understand that and, and going in and checking those costs on a monthly basis. But, but having someone to come alongside to you, and, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why um, you know, with our consultants, you know, we have different consultants for different things, um, different pieces of it. So like culture development, you know, as far as like people um, and understanding your people and understanding, you know, what drives people and, and how to run those people. But but it's important because being able to see those things um, is extremely important for the health of your business. Yeah, every company should be running health checks in their company and having someone that can be a mentor or coach or someone that can guide them and lead them because they can see different aspects of it. Wait, man, I got another question. I think, All right. I think we're going to have to do a part two. You'll come back next week and we'll do, uh, we'll do the yeah. rest of these because we're not going to yeah. get through them all. Yeah. Um, another question we might ask ourselves, and we'll do this last one for the day. Do we need guidance on expanding our service offerings or diversifying? You know, a, a consultant can help us provide insights and potential opportunities for expanding our company services or diversifying into, you know, related areas. You know, they can, you know, man, Ron's got so much market research because of all the different all the different stuff that he uses, you know, like you're into roofing and you've done other consulting with other types of construction, you know. So when you've got that broad look into things, man, it's a, it's a big deal, you know. And they can and and they can help you assess customer demands and help the company yeah. make the right decisions that they need to make so they can expand. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, too, it, you know, when you're expanding your business, you know, there again, that's being able to look with inside the business to make sure that expanding it is the right move. Um, and a lot of times you're absolutely right. Understanding the market, understanding the need, understanding the service of that, of that, what you're getting ready to offer. If someone else is doing it, how are you going to do it better? And a lot of times we think that it's brand new when that some of these things are out there. They just don't take the time to research it, to see where other people may have, uh, have failed at um, in those services. But it's also important when you're looking at services or adding additional services to uh, to what you're doing is to stay within the industry of what you're doing um, and find ways of building um, like additional services off of that. And what I mean by that is sometimes I mean, you'll have people that specialize and say like um, uh, maybe it is roofing, maybe it's like they do roofing and gutters, right? Well, then all of a sudden they want to go over here and try to do bathroom remodels or they try to go do this and they don't have the infrastructure for that. They don't have the crews for that. Um, you know, so it ends up costing them money and they spread themselves extremely thin. And now they're putting 10 percent here, 10 percent here to where if they put 100 percent of their effort into what they're doing and then find services that can complement what they're doing, then then now the profitability is going to be a lot higher because you already have the team. You already have the know how you already have the people, um, you know how to sell it, you know how to price it, you know how to go through those things. So I think that's a big deal, Dan. I really do. Yeah, and that's what we're doing with uh, Expert Stain and Seal. You know, it's, yeah. it just complements our business. We're in a wood market. It only makes sense, you know. So, 
you know, when you're talking about that, that's a big deal. And I forgot to mention to that, that at one point I did do that. Um, as far as like standing fences in my career, uh, really? I for, I, yeah, I totally forgot about it. <laughs> and, um, and, in a lot, and a lot of times, you know, what people don't realize that's an investment, right? So people are making an investment in a fence. And over, over, you know, there, and when you're doing like cedar or pine or whatever, over a period of time, you know, when those fences are turning gray, well, what they don't really understand, those things are getting sealed with like mildew, right? So being able to open that up and being able to use something like Expert um, to be able to um, go in and, and give it and give it the nutrients that that wood needs to extend the life of it. I mean, when people are doing that and that could be an upgrade uh, for this industry, that could be that change order when they're putting in those fences and bringing out the natural colors with a uh, product like Expert. Um, it's, it's a big deal, man. Uh, it so really to, is. It yeah, to it, it's a profit. It's a margin booster. You know, oh, absolutely it is. It's a margin absolutely. booster, man. It's, you know, so now you're taking a job then at, that let's just use a, an easy number of $5,000 and you just turned it into a $7,500 job. And yeah. when you look at the, the profit margin on, if you take the same margin and apply it to both, I mean, it, it's a customer that you've already sold. You don't have to sell them anymore. They already yeah. trust the company. They already know I'm going to give a deposit and the job's going to get done. You already have a rapport with them, you know? So, man. well, and then and then the last thing, I'm sorry, the last thing on this is on that fence is is now you got that customer for life. Stop and think about it because every five to 10 years, you can go back until that fence has to be replaced again. So if you don't do something like this, you go put a fence up and don't do something like a preventative maintenance like this, then you only got that customer once. This is going to allow you to have that customer for well, life. Man, Expert Stain and Seal is coming out with their lifetime warranty on their, uh, their product awesome. for your fence. So if oh, you stain great. it, I think every three years, if you clean it, stain it, maintain it, the longevity of your uh, of your wood fence is just gonna it's it's gonna explode, man. It's gonna be oh, so right. you're gonna get so much more return on that investment in your fence. So, but look, man, um, I gotta cut this short. But look, real quick, um, you're not gonna be in Vegas at the fence show, but Ben is gonna be in Vegas at the fence show, and Ben is he's a business partner with. with That's he? right. So, so, so Ben is, um, he, he's actually part owner. Um, I've, I've kind of given him part ownership of, of next level, but, um, he is basically the VP over, over sales and, and operations for me. And, um, and so he, uh, he's been around me for, I've known that I've known him since he was 19 years old. Wow. And, <laughs> yeah. So I've known, I've known him for a long time and, uh, and he, he kind of takes care of the day-to-day -day, uh, operations for me. And uh, he's doing an extremely good job. But yes, he's going to be out there in Vegas, um, and and I know I know that uh, it's going to be a good time. And uh, appreciate the invite, man. Yeah, he's not going to. Y'all aren't going to have a booth, but Ben is going to be doing the class with me, and I call him seven foot tall, Mark Olson from Job Nimbus. Well, we're going to be doing a collaboration to show you how Job Nimbus can help your business, how Next Level can help you utilize your Job Nimbus all while being a business coach. And I'm just going to kind of be there like, oh, yeah, yeah, that works. Good job, guys. <laughs> I'm going to be like a little cheerleader. Yeah. Except I'm yeah. not going to have on a little skirt like cheerleaders do. Yeah, and I would recommend people just go by and and, and, and talk to him, especially if, if they're looking for a CRM. Um, they don't have anything. They're, they've been on pen and paper forever. Uh, their business is growing. It's just not scalable. Or if they're existing to job numbers and been using them for a long time, um, we can definitely uh, lead them and guide them in the right directions. Yeah, Ben helped me with some automations the other day. And I'm like oh, known as the automation guy. And I'm like, dude, I cannot figure this out. <laughs> and it took Ben about five minutes of playing with it. He's like, wait, you got to do this? Like, no, 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 no. You got to do this? There you go. And boom. And I've been using it ever since. I was like, Oh, that's man. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He's been a great help. Well, look, Ronnie, it was great having you, man. And uh, we, we're going to come next week. We got a few more questions on our, uh, on our sheet here that we need to talk about. And uh, we'll see you next week, man. So, hey, guys. Y'all right. keep on fencing. You've been listening to My Fence Life. Yes, we like to have fun. Beer, bourbon, and business. And although we have fun, we take our business 
very seriously. Dan Blanc is known as the Fence King, and he's been providing high-quality fence solutions since 1999. He's connected to industry leaders, business leaders, financing experts, and marketing gurus that will be on the show to talk about their success stories. To find out more about us, hit the website at MyFenceLife.com. Listen to the show wherever you consume your content. We are everywhere. Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcast. See you next time on My Fence Life.